Hey guys, it's Kay. I hope you're all well. So today I'm going to go through some of my top new secret settings on the Amazon Fire Stick. So just like a lot of other players, the best features of the Amazon Fire TV devices aren't immediately obvious. And the newest and best features of the Amazon Fire Stick aren't always well advertised. So in this video, I'm going to go through some of the newest and best features of the Amazon Fire Stick. If you're new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with the latest tech tutorials, reviews and unboxings, I do everything including Fire Stick, Raspberry Pi and Android TV tips and tricks. So subscribe and hit the notification button. Now in order to get the latest and best features of the Amazon Fire Stick, you need to be on the latest version of the Amazon Fire Stick operating system. So to get the latest version of the Amazon Fire Stick operating system, head on over to the settings cog and scroll down to My Fire TV and click on About. Now from here, you can see information like device type and you can see that I've got the Fire Stick TV 4K version. Now these secret settings that I'm going to show you will be on all Fire Stick devices. You can also see storage capacity, software version and importantly the Fire TV home version. Okay, so let's scroll all the way down to install update and the update will begin. And then just be patient for it to update and reboot. Now you might need to come back and check for updates depending on the last time you updated your Fire Stick. As you can see mine needed a couple of updates to get to the latest version. And in all, it took a couple of minutes each time it updated. And it went through a few reboots. Just be patient. And to be honest, if you have any other issues with your Fire Stick, these reboots and updates will probably help solve those. Now guys, in order to get the best out of your Fire Stick TV, you need to have a decent network connection. And that's where our first secret setting comes in. So head on over to your settings cog, and then scroll down to networks, which is the third one along. Okay, so here you're going to see all the networks available to you. So I've got the first one which I'm connected to and I've got a saved one also for backup. Now if you click on see all networks, you can scan for new networks if you press the rescan button. So as you can see, another one's become available. So pretty straightforward so far. Now if you have a network and you are connected to it, but you're having issues and you want to investigate what's going on with it, this is where the new feature comes in. As you can see on the side, it says press the play pause button to check the network status. And by doing this, you get the following new screen come up. So here we get some extra information and it's telling us I'm connected to a 5 GHz network via the Wi-Fi and it's connected to the internet. And if you look down midway, it gives us recommendations. And currently my advice is no issues are found with my network connection. Now we've also got a network download speed on the right. Now currently the information here is blank. We need to run a speed test and we can do that by pressing the run speed test button. And then just wait a few moments for it to finish the test. And you can see the result pop up and my internet speed is just over 40 megabytes and it tells me it's last measured today. And you can see that the recommendations have changed because of this result. The message now reads, based on your latest speed test results, your internet speed can support up to 4K video quality without interruptions, which is what I expected, as it is on the 5 gigahertz frequency. Now I can also go ahead and test my other network by selecting it and then going back into the check network status and then running the test again. And this time you can see it's slightly less speed than the other network and we get the same message about 4K video. Now we can also get a whole load of more information if we click on the advanced button. So here we can see the advanced status of my network. Now all this information can help you diagnose issues and improve your connectivity. We've got network status, network quality and network data usage. We've also got the various IP addresses associated with my device and we've got the MAC address as well. Now on the right we've got some new information about the quality of your network. The signal strength value is displayed as a power ratio in dBms from 0 to minus 100. So the closer the value to zero it is, the better your signal strength is. Now mine being minus 42 is half decent, but if it was minus 15, that would be a lot better. And all I have to do to change this is move my device closer to the router. Now the other notable figures listed here are the channel utilization and the signal to noise ratio. The channel utilization value tells you how much traffic from all sources exists on your Wi-Fi channel that your Fire TV stick is using. So the lower the value this is, the better. And mine sitting at 0% is ideal. Now the signal to noise ratio is the difference between your noise level and your signal strength. And the higher this value is, the better. And mine is sitting at 50 and it says it's high, so that's ideal as well. Now below the network quality information, we've got the network data usage information. So this lists how much more network data has passed through your Fire TV during the current day, current week, current month and previous month. Now currently my information is only showing for today as I've only just updated the Fire Stick TV. Now the other thing you can do from here is configure the data monitoring and you do that by pressing the button. And from here you can turn on data usage monitoring. And you've got various options here. You can set your video quality. You can change it from good, better and best, which is the best, of course. You can also set data alerts and you'll receive an on-screen alert when your Amazon Fire Stick TV's data consumption reaches 90% and 100% of the set limit, which is handy if you're on pay per minute data consumption. So if you select set data alert, you can set a data limit in gigabytes for your Amazon Fire Stick. 
Now another useful thing you can do is check which app is using the most data this month. Just click on the monthly top data usage and then the Fire Stick will do some calculations and you'll get the app that's using the most data that month. So overall guys, you can agree that this is a useful first secret setting. So we all know that the Amazon Fire TV Stick still only come with only 8GB of storage. However, only about 4.5GB is available for you to use for your own apps because the rest is used by the device's operating system and the numerous system apps that come pre-installed on the device. And therefore, you start running out of internal storage quite quickly if you like to have numerous apps installed at once. And it gets worse if you've got lots of games installed because they're a lot larger in size than your normal apps. Okay, so Fire Stick apps have got bigger and bigger over the years and the number of pre-installed apps from Amazon continues to grow each year. But the internal storage of all the Fire Stick TV models is the same at 8GB which was what it was in 2014 when the Fire TV Stick came out. So a lot of users experienced running out of internal storage on their Fire Stick TVs. So of course we all need help managing the storage on our Fire Stick TVs. So Amazon has come to the rescue with a solution to help you figure out which of your Fire TV apps is hogging up most of your space. And this solution comes in the form of an option to sort your app list by app size, which makes it a lot easier to know which apps you might want to delete first. So at the top of the Manage Installed Applications list within the Fire TV Settings menu, you'd get the list of apps sorted alphabetically. But now you get the option to sort the list by app size. This option automatically places the largest apps at the top of the list. And all you need to do to access this new feature is click on Sort Alphabetically and you'll get a new sub-menu. And you simply select App Size. So as you can see, this makes it easy to see which apps will free up the most internal storage space if they were uninstalled. And worryingly on the top of my list seems to be the Amazon Silk Browser. And to be honest, I can't really remember the last time I used the Silk Browser on my Amazon Fire TV Stick. I always use my phone to browse the internet, so I would definitely consider uninstalling this app. Because at 148 megabytes, I could easily get three other apps in its place. And as a bonus, if you didn't already know, you can clear up the cache of any individual app very quickly now. Just click on the fast rewind button when you're highlighting the app, and you'll get the following option to quickly clear the cache of the app. And while we're here, we can easily uninstall the app as well. Simply click on the play pause button on your remote and you'll get the following option. And you can confirm to uninstall or just cancel. So with all the different Amazon Fire TVs, Fire TV Sticks and Fire TV Cubes that have been released over the last few years, it's difficult for some people to figure out exactly which model, version, year or generation device they own. So this is just a quick show and tell to show you how to find out which version you've got. Now bear in mind this method is probably the best as it's going to show you which Fire TV model you have, what generation it is, when it was released and its specs and a whole load more. Okay so all we need to do is head on over to the search icon and then enter in here I N F O R and you should see further down the second one down Informer app so click on that now I've already installed it so I don't need to reinstall it now just click on it and straight away it will start loading up the information from your Fire Stick so you can see I've got the Amazon Fire TV Stick 4K first generation and it was first released October 31st 2018 so there's some pretty accurate information here guys already now information like this will definitely come in handy if you want to know if you're still in warranty with your product and below that we've got the hardware specs and I've got the MediaTek quad core 1.7 gigahertz model and it also gives me the GPU model, the amount of RAM I've got, internal storage. Now it says external storage is not officially supported, but we all know the way around that. And just check out my videos if you want to know the solution to that. We've got Bluetooth 5, Wi-Fi 802.11, Ethernet external, 10 by 100 megabits adapter. And below that subtitle, we've got the software. And my Fire Stick is running on Fire OS 6, and I don't know if that's the latest. And it's telling me the OS is based on Android 7.1 Nugget. And it also gives me the SDK version. And then across from software, we've got video and audio support. And we've got things like maximum resolution, maximum frame rate, high dynamic range support. So I've got Dolby Vision, HDR10 and others. And among other things, we've got video supported, audio supported. So guys, as you can see, this is quite a useful app and it gives you all the information you know all on one screen. And it couldn't be more simpler and straightforward to get your hands on. Now this next setting feature is probably one of the best settings I've seen on a Fire Stick TV up to date. And it basically makes your smart TV even smarter. And it's called Smart Home Dashboard. And you access it by holding down the mic button on your remote control. 
and saying open smart home dashboard. And as you can see from my smart home dashboard, I can control all my smart lights, smart plugs and other connected devices. I can also see a live feed of my video doorbell and my other smart cameras, including the blink cameras. And this is all viewable on my large screen TV. Now, once you've opened the Fire TV dashboard, you'll see all your favorite smart home devices and groups, and you can use the remote control to select one of your devices and control it. As you can see here, I've got a section for my cameras, plugs, lights, groups, and smart home. And if I click on the guarding camera, it'll bring it up on the big screen. And the cool thing is you can minimize this camera view and carry on what you're doing on your Fire Stick TV. So as you can see here, I've got a live view of my Blink camera in the top right hand corner, and I can just carry on as normal on my Fire Stick TV. Pretty cool if you ask me. And if you just want to maximize that camera feed while you're browsing your Fire Stick TV, just ask Alexa to do that or long press on your home button on your remote. And you can just close it or maximize it by following the on-screen instructions. Now if you want to do more than just turn your smart devices on and off, you can press the menu button with the three lines on your remote. And this will allow you to control the brightness of your smart lights or change the temperature of your smart thermostat, if you have one. You can also see all your devices separated into groups at the top of your screen. And you can access this Fire TV dashboard menu by pressing the up direction button on your remote and then you can switch between groups with the left and right direction buttons. Now once you select a group you'll see all the smart devices in that category and you can turn each of them off with the select button on your remote or press the menu button for more options. Now if you want to see a device on your home screen of your Fire TV dashboard you'll have to add it to your favorite devices in the Alexa app. So head on over to your Alexa app Tap on the Devices tab at the bottom of your screen and then select Add New Favorite at the end of the Favorites section and tap the star icon next to the device you want to add. Finally tap Done in the right hand corner. Now the Fire TV dashboard will automatically update when you add new devices to your favorites in the Alexa app. Now it may take a few minutes but just be patient. And that's it guys, it's as simple as that. You're ready to view your smart dashboard on your Fire Stick TV. Now if you do want to see more videos on the smart dashboard on the Fire Stick TV, let me know in the comments below. Or if you want to know anything else about the Fire Stick TV, like changing notification settings, turning off targeted advertising, or even expanding your Fire Stick TV storage, or connecting Bluetooth headphones, using your phone as a Fire Stick remote. I've done tons of videos like this on my channel and I'll direct you to the right one. Like I said guys, any questions, put them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. And if there's enough demand, I may even do a video on the topic. All that remains for me to say is, if you like this video, give us a like and please do consider subscribing to the channel for more great content like this. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.